Hey friends, today we're going to talk about MIDI velocity. I'm just going to go ahead and show you something that I think a lot of people run into uh, when using different MIDI instruments. So check this out. So that's, that's my riff. But what I want this to sound like is... Which it's very hard to play that riff that I want in a mellow way. I like the, the mellow sound of this uh, electric piano way more than... But in order to play it up to speed, it ends up sounding kind of blown out and like distorted. You know, that like, that like really loud sound, okay? So what this problem is a problem of is velocity, okay? I, I, my hand and my skill level isn't high enough and this keyboard is not expressive enough to play this riff in a mellow, easy way, right? So how do I fix that? Well, Ableton provides, under its MIDI effects, a velocity plugin, okay? And if you drag and drop that before your VST or your uh, Ableton device or whatever, you can control the incoming velocity to the plugin, right? So what do all these controls mean? Well, velocity is generated on a scale of 1 to 127, just like all MIDI uh, MIDI CCs, right? So what you can do is you can you have an insane amount of control over these. So I went ahead and recorded this this riff, right? And th these are the velocity curves that I got. So check it out. You know, and to a certain degree, that's nice. Okay, we like when we listen to music, we like the emphasis that the musician put on different notes, and these are really good things to try to preserve. But in this case, it's just all over the place, right? So maybe the first thing that you've done in the past is you just kind of select all these and you're like, well, you know what? I'm just going to pull them down, right? And Ableton gracefully, what Ableton does, which is pretty cool, is it, it gracefully doesn't, it it changes the amount that you're pulling these down differently. So if the if the hit is lower, right, it doesn't pull it down as fast as the, as the, the peak hit. So it kind of operates on an exponential curve. It's kind of cool, right? So now you get... But now some of those hits are so low that I can't hear them. So, you know, what is the solution? Here's my here's my original riff. So let's go back into this velocity plugin and, and, and explore it a little bit. So what do these different controls do? Well, let's focus on this area because still, to, to me, this is still the most useful area. So the out high is the absolute highest amount of velocity that will go into whatever VST is, is being played. So if I pull this down, listen to the riff. There's my mellow sound I'm looking for. But I'm still losing some of those low notes. So the out low is the absolute lowest that the MIDI velocity will go to. So let's listen to this as I pull it up. Now what I've done is I've lost just a little bit of that kind of pushy, pulley, kind of like quiet then loud sound. So what I what I need to do is just kind of mess with these until I get them to a level that I that I like. So maybe I'll give a little more out high. There we go. You can feel it kind of pushing and pulling. There's that energy, there's that that stuff, but we're still in a mixable range, you know? So in, in some ways you could think of this as compressing, right? And curiously enough, they've got a compressor slash expander kind of control that if you I'm gonna I'm gonna bring these back to their initial initial settings so we still have this wily kind of crazy key sound now if I go forwards I get an expander so it's forcing all the notes above halfway to be higher in velocity right so listen to what this does right now, in, in this case, this would be really nice to use for adding, you could think of it this way, you could, you could be adding more attack to drums or something, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's really not exactly a compressor or an expander, but, in, but, it, but I get the concept that they're going for. However, if I go the other way, this is now compressing, okay? So what's happening is, is most of my notes, unless they're super hard or super quiet, are going to kind of hang out in this range, right? So now we got... which almost works for me. It almost works, you know? I still think that, you know, this kind of setting where we've got 
this and this going on is kind of what I'm looking for. Okay. So then what does drive do? Well, drive is essentially adding a logarithmic or exponential curve. I gotta keep these all the way up in order to see that, right? A logarithmic or exponential curve to the incoming velocity, right? So it interacts with these other controls. So let's say I want more often than not, I want things to be louder. So as I turn this up, that's what I'm gonna get, right? Now, obviously that's unusable, but what I can do is I can pull down the high and check this out. So just see this insane amount of control you get over velocity. It's amazing, okay? So I'm gonna set this where it was, right? And now let's explore the opposite problem, okay? Now this is just uh, Able one of Ableton's uh, drum kit packs, the uh, acoustic drums, so. Let's just talk about MIDI controllers for a second. All MIDI controllers have a certain velocity curve. Each one is gonna be different. The higher end the controller, the more opportunity you're gonna to have to actually internally change the kind of velocity that's coming out of the controller, okay? Um, in this case, I feel like a key step is kind of more tailored toward drums. Like if I thwack the key, I'm gonna get 127. Right? So in this case, I'm going to think of maybe a drum line to play along with these keys. So I'm just gonna record it real quick. Don't mind the click track. All right, so some, something like that. Maybe I'll just take the second little bit of this. Now, as you can see, it actually did a pretty dang good job <laughs> of recording this, this part, all right? I've got what I want, you know, when you're recording drums in general, one of the ideas that you, that you want to do is you, wanna, you want your drummer to thwack the kick and snare and play the cymbals lightly, right? And this controller, yet again, is kind of more tailored for that. So this is kind of what I want. I want a couple... See, do you notice how like these 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 second beats are kind of getting a little bit less velocity? That's because the drum that's that's what the drum part was in my head, right? So And what that did is it kind of emphasized the the snare, right? But in this case, there's still some things that I wanted uh differently. So, if I take this velocity plug in and put it yet again before these, okay? One thing I can do is I can quote unquote compress the drums, right? So, here's this it. In fact, let's just listen to the drums. I'm going to take the keys out. So here's with it and without it. And you can see, you can hear how the uh, snare is like jumping out of the mix when I turn this com this compressor setting, whatever, off. Uh, when it's on, you can hear that the everything's kind of reined in a little bit. So Let's though take a take a listen to this. I and mean, what I don't like about this is that the hi hat sample in this kit, which is this guy, right? So let's just solo it. It's super loud, right? It's 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 not really like hanging out with the rest of the kit. So just remember that with any of these, if you're in a drum rack, an instrument rack, you can take these plugins and they 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 are what I would like to call extremely inexpensive when it comes to CPU usage. I can take a velocity. Okay, and I can just drag and drop it into the hi-hat, right? So now, where the hi-hat sample is, the first thing that's gonna be in the chain is the velocity. It snaps, it knows where to put the velocity. So, so I just drag and dropped it over the hi-hat. What I don't want, what I want the hi-hat to do is to kind of not be so, uh, it, it's just so aggressive, right? Everything else sounded good. So what I can do is I can actually just take the Instead of compressing it, quote unquote, I'm going to just turn the out high down a little bit. So check it out. Now we're emphasizing the open. I don't know why that happened. Oh, beep. Right. And maybe I want it not to be too quiet. Okay, so that's velocity in, like kind of as an insert effect, if you, if you think about it that way, inside of a drum rack, right? So this is another way to control it. Okay, 
So let's do something else. Now I'm going to, you know, just, I'm going to grab Ableton's classic glue compressor. So always sounds pretty nice over top of drums. And I'm going to actually put this at the very end of the chain. Okay. So I can get some nice, actually, you know, it has a, I think there's a, yeah, rock parallel room. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to crunch this down a little bit, make these aggressive drums. Man, that is annoying. There it is. Okay. So now I've got some aggressive drums. Now, when drums are being processed by a compressor, what happens? It means that the, 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 the biggest hits and the smallest hits are going to be kind of uh, moved around, right? L let's, let's talk once more about velocity in a different way. What you can also do with velocity is kind of the opposite of what we've been doing. And you can add random velocity levels to the drums to make it sound like this. So this is a loop, right? This loop is going to sound exactly the same all the time. Right? It's just going to sound exactly the same forever. But if I have a velocity plugin interfacing with a compressor, okay, the compressor is going to take care of different, different velocity levels. It's going to kind of keep the drums contained to a relative kind of same amount of volume, right? That's what a compressor does. So what I can do here is I can actually turn up the random. And what's going to be rad about that is that over time, it's going to change this loop, kind of the tone of the sound. Like each one of these like drum hits, if you listen to them, with different velocities, they have different tones, right? These are multi-samples, meaning that when the velocity is low, it's a different sample, actually, than when you hit it hard, right? So I'm going to add random, check it out. So now every single time this loop repeats itself, it's going to sound different, right? Pardon my really bad playing, but <laughs> you get the idea, right? So, But here's the cool thing. With random... I'm going to set it about halfway. Another thing that I can do is I can still mess with some of these other controls. So as you can see, when you turn random up, it has this gray area. This is just showing the ranges of where random numbers will happen. Okay. So like, let's say that this is 60. If I, if, if a random is going, it'll actually go all the way down to what appears to be like 15 and all the way up to what appears to be 80. Right. So if you interface with all these different controls, right. You can get a, a wide variety of sound, and then you can, you know, maybe record this to an audio track, and you've got a lot of use out of just one, you know, two-bar section of, this, of these drums, right? So just remember, you know, Velocity is an extremely, quote-unquote, inexpensive... Uh, in terms of CPU, like processing, it just, it takes nothing, like use it profusely, it doesn't matter, you know, it just helps rein things in, instead of always meticulously going into here and messing with these things and arrangement view or whatever, you can use this plugin to your advantage, you can also automate it, so, you know, maybe there's one part where you want it to be more dynamic and one part where you want it to be more reined in, just use the velocity plugin, you know, uh, there are limitations to keyboards, and this is one way you can overcome those. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Love y'all. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye.